Full wave rectification is one type of distortion effect. Here, the signal is clipped or distorted by taking portions of the signal which have a negative amplitude and flipping them so they have the corresponding positive amplitude. This effect can be implemented in computer code by making use of the mathematical function called absolute value. Let's take a look at how we can create our own full wave rectifier. Let's look at a couple methods for creating full wave rectification. I've started this script called distortion test that I'll be using to test the various distortion algorithms. Initially, I have a very simple input signal with a few sample values ranging from negative one to positive one. I'll plot this signal so we can visualize it. Our first method for full wave rectification is based on the built-in absolute value function. I'll demonstrate a few things down here in the command window as a refresher. The name of this function is ABS. If we use a positive value as our input to this function, it will return for us an answer as also positive. However, if we were to use an input as negative, it will return for us the positive corresponding value of the negative. Not only can this function handle individual scalar numbers, but it can also handle arrays. Let's look at how that works back up here in our script. So I'm going to remove the semicolon so that the result of this is printed in the command window. And we'll also write that our output signal is the absolute value of the input signal. We'll print that to the command window as well. So we can compare the inputs and the output. Here we have the positive and negative values. For our output, is just the positive values. So I'll write a comment for full wave rectification. Now let's plot these things to compare them. Initially, I'll plot the input signal on a figure window. I'm going to keep that figure window open by using hold on. Then I'll right on top, I'm going to plot the output signal so we can compare them and then type hold off to say that I'm finished with this figure window. Initially, when our input signal is positive, the red signal is plotted right on top of the blue one. So our red is our output, our blue is our input. However, when the input signal goes negative, we can see that the output gets reflected up to the positive version of the negative values. I'm also going to demonstrate this with a more complicated kind of input signal. Let's use a sine wave signal, something closer to an audio signal. So I'm even going to create a sampling rate of 48,000 with a sampling period. That's one divided by our sampling rate. We will say that uh, frequency is three hertz. Not something that we can listen to, but it's nice for uh, looking at. We need a time vector then for our, our sine wave signal. Let's just say it's uh, one second long. And now we can create our input signal is a sine wave, two times pi times f times t. We should be able to take the absolute value of this signal and plot both of them together. Just like before, when our input signal is positive, our output is right on top. But then when it goes negative, the absolute value will reflect it up to the positive value. Besides just using the built-in absolute value function, let's also look at how we can more explicitly write our own method to perform full wave rectification. This is going to involve going sample by sample through our signal and determining whether we need to change the negative to positive or if the positive should just stay the same. So here, let's go back to our original input signal. Get rid of this and come back to it later on. The way that this is going to work is we'll go and we'll check this value first, see if we need to do anything to it. Then we'll move on to our second value and see if we need to do anything to that. So that process means that we need to do a loop to test each individual sample. So we'll write a loop for, use a sample uh, variable number or a variable name of n. We'll start from sample number one and go up through the length of our input signal. So whether 
It's a signal that has seven samples or 48,001 samples. This loop will be fine. Now, what do we need to do? We need to check whether we need to uh, change the negative value to positive or just leave the positive value the same and assign it to the output. So this is a case where we need to have separate conditions to handle the positive numbers and the negative numbers. This is a perfect case when we, it would be useful to use the conditional statements. So we'll set one up here. If our input signal at the current time sample is greater than or equal to zero, so in the cases when it's greater than or equal to zero, what do we want to have happen? We want the output signal at the current time sample to be equal to the input signal at the current time sample. So we'll say, if positive, assign input to output. Otherwise, so we'll use the else statement. This is the case. If negative, flip the input. So we only want to multiply the input signal by negative one if it's positive. So we'll say our output here is going to be negative one times our input sample. So this is a way we're using a loop and also a conditional statement inside of a loop to go through and figure out whether we need to flip the input simple or not. So just to visualize how this is going to work, I'm going to put up here, I will print out whatever the current input sample is. And when we're done, I'll print out the output sample. We should end up with something very similar when we eventually plot it after the loop to what we saw before. So I'm going to set a breakpoint so we can step each sample through. So we've created our input uh, signal. Now I'll step. We'll see printed down below in the command window our first sample. We're going to check is this sample greater than zero? If so, assign that to our output and jump down to the end. And that's our output. Move on to our next sample as a value of one. This continues until we reach an input sample. It's going to take on a negative value. So here we have an input of negative 0.5. This time we'll jump down to our else statement. We're going to have negative one multiplied by our input. We'll see that our output actually takes on the positive version of the negative. This continues for the remaining samples in our signal. Now we've created an array for our output signal. It's the same length as our input signal. So we can plot it and see that the output is right on top of the input. I'll switch back over to using our sine wave. You don't need to print each individual sample. So just like before, 48,000 samples per second, sampling period of one divided by our sampling rate, F equal to three, T from zero up to one. And we'll use now as our input signal, a sine wave. I will send through the loop and check with the conditional statements. Just like before, we ended up with the correct result where our negative values are flipped to positive. The last thing I'm going to demonstrate as part of this segment is to take this block of code that performs full wave rectification and transfer it over to a different script, a function script, so that we don't have to have this entire loop and conditional statements within our distortion test, 
we can put it inside of a function script that we can call and use in other places too. So we'll start a new script and we'll say at the top, there's a special type of script called a function that has an output signal. We'll give it the name, full wave rectification. And it has an input signal here. We'll save it. it, has the same name here, full wave rectification, as we have on the first line of the script. Then what do we need to do? We'll copy and paste over this code to our full wave rectification. How does it work? It takes in the input signal, performs a loop to go sample by sample or element wise through it and decide whether it needs to change the value from negative to positive. Back over here in our distortion test, this is where we have removed all that code so that now all we need to do is call the function. Full wave rectification based on our input signal and see that it's a nice way to clean up and tidy our code so that we can now read exactly what's taking place, We're performing full wave rectification on our input signal. So I'll run this script, see that we produce the same exact output. So now I've demonstrated a couple different methods for performing full wave rectification, including how we can explicitly write our own method for going element by element through an array and deciding using conditional statements whether we need to flip the signal amplitude value or not. Additionally, we took a block of code that's used to perform this algorithm and transferred it over to a separate function that now we can reuse anytime we want to perform full wave rectification.